Hi everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to teach you what to expect for a band 7 pharmacist interview. So this is specifically for people that are already a band 6 in hospital, working for the NHS and looking to move up towards a band 7 role. This is not for industry, it's not for community pharmacy and I'm mainly going to tell you questions to expect for a rotational pharmacist role only because that's the kind of interviews that I've had and I don't know how else to advise you on other interviews because I've not done those. So if you're looking for questions that you're going to get elsewhere then this is not the video for you but if you're working in hospital and you've been a band six and you think that you're ready for a band seven hopefully this video should help so the first thing to kind of note about band seven interviews in hospital is they kind of already know what you've done because you've written what you've done throughout your band six probably in your application where you write your like work experience whilst as a six they kind of want to know more a little bit more about you and what you did during your pre-reg year and things like that they're not necessarily that interested I've realized as a seven. So a lot of my seven interviews, they've gone straight into the questions. It's been less about the who are you and what can you bring and straight into, okay, what have you done? So that is the first thing to mention. I know that for my previous band six interview videos, I made it into two sections. The first section was how to prepare in general about the hospital. And the second section was the questions that you're gonna get. Today, I'm gonna skip straight to the questions, mainly because in the band seven interviews, they've not necessarily asked much about me and more about how I can answer the questions. Another thing you'll notice about the band seven interview is that it's slightly less clinical. So I have done four band seven interviews so far, two of them, like very clinical and asked me to talk about a scenario they gave me a situation a patient and just asked me to talk about it the other two one was not clinical at all and i didn't get asked anything really clinical and the other one was kind of okay talk me through the discharge process of the patient so yeah it is definitely less clinical as a band seven and i think the reason for that is as a band seven pharmacist they kind of already expect you to have good foundational band six knowledge so there's no real reason to test you on that whereas for a band six interview obviously they don't know where your clinical knowledge is at because some of you are from me to pharmacy and some of you are from industry gp etc so yeah those are the two main points to consider when preparing for your band seven interview as always i have split this video into sections because i feel like it's easiest to do so so when preparing the first section that i started to prepare for my band seven interviews is about me and the post in general. This I kind of just had as a backup. Barely any of the hospitals actually asked much about me. Some of them just went straight into the questions, but I always feel like as a backup, I had a list of all of the rotations that I've done and things that I've learned in those rotations and why I want to go for that post. Under the branch of me and the post, I had answers for questions like these ready. What rotations I've done? What makes me a good pharmacist? Something about the values of the hospital and how I've shown them those values, my biggest achievement to date, what kind of things I want to achieve in the first three months of the post, weaknesses and strengths, how I've progressed within the past few years and what can I bring to the post, what skills do I have. So that is under the branch of me and the post. Like I said, not many hospitals ask those questions but I had all of those prepared just in case. Another set of questions that I had prepared was about CPD and self-learning. So what has been my latest CPD? I always had an example of that. How do I continue my own self-development? Then I had a section for the patient first section. So how have I put the patient first? What examples can I give throughout my band six role as a pharmacist where I've put the patient first? The next section that I prepared for was the teamwork section. So what is a team? How can I support a team? How do I motivate a team? How have I shown teamwork? How have I been involved in an MDT? And what are the qualities needed for a team? So I'm, I'm not saying that I got all of these questions, but I definitely always had a question about a team, whether that's, you know, how I motivate a team or how I'm a team player. Another section to prepare for is audit. So so what's the latest audit that you've done in hospital? So for a lot of us, we'll be doing diplomas and I know for my UCL diploma, I had to do an audit. So I already had something to talk about. So make sure that you have something to say instead of I haven't really done an audit in the past two years, make sure that if you haven't done one, that you do one and that you can talk about it. It can also be an audit that you have to do on the ward. So for example, we have to do controlled drug audits. We also have to do medicines management audits. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an audit that you've led. Obviously it's better if that was the case, but just try and think of a way that you might have done an audit in the past 
few years. Another section of questions that you're guaranteed to get is about band six training and how you have been able to teach. The step up between a six and a seven, I've realized is that as a band six pharmacist, you're more concerned about yourself. So like, how am I gonna screen this chart? How am I gonna make sure this patient goes home safely? How am I gonna learn? Whereas as a seven, your responsibilities have to be looking after other sixes and junior pharmacists as well. So think about ways where you've done teaching for your trust. So whether you've done like a presentation in the department or how you are a mentor for some of your band six pharmacists. Basically any sort of example of how you've helped a junior pharmacist develop. A few questions that I had during my interviews was like, okay, your band six is struggling. So what sort of ways would you manage their learning and development? How would you help them? And have you ever done this before? Have you helped advance it before? So yeah, think about ways that you can do that if you aren't doing it already and think about ways that you can explain this in the interview. Oh, another question that comes to mind under that section is what would you do if a band six had some sort of conflict with a technician or with a patient on the ward or with a nurse on the ward and how you would manage that which leads me on to the next section which is conflict so a lot of my interviews had some form of question on conflict whether that's conflict between you and somebody else or whether that's conflict between somebody and a patient or you know somebody that you're managing a band six and a senior how would you manage that conflict always think about ways where you would you know speak to people take them aside think about what the problem actually is how you could resolve that problem and when to escalate right this is a big one you will always get asked a question about a change to a service so how have you made a change to a service as a band six i felt like it was quite hard to make changes so i really had to dig deep and think of examples of why i did that and only now as a seven do i feel confident to be making those changes so when i had a few of my interviews the reason why i probably failed a couple of them is because I really did not have good examples of this. I can say fully now, I'm not gonna give you my example because that's going into a whole other story, but I can say now that I've definitely made some changes to service. So if you aren't already, think about things that you might wanna change about how your hospital or department are running now and how are you gonna go about making those changes. So if you don't have a good answer to this, you need to be prepared. Like you need to think of a good example of how you're making that change to a service because guaranteed this question will come up. And if your answer is rubbish, you'll get rejected. So definitely think about ways you can make a positive change and think about a real example where you thought maybe this could be done better, maybe this could be done differently and how then you went forwards with trying to get that change across. Right, cost saving is another big section of questions. You'll definitely get a question about how you might have implemented cost saving. So what have you done on the ward or within the department? What do you know about the funding implications within pharmacy? So I guess as a six, you're not really thinking actively about the cost of medication or what how you would you know cut costs or how you can think about ways of saving within the department whereas as a band seven you then will get introduced to high cost drugs funding funding applications and things like that so they want you to maybe you might not be able to give a full example but they definitely want you to have thought about it so even if it means like little examples such as checking all of the patients on medication so you know exactly what they have and making sure they're not redispensing that is a cost saving measure obviously you can think of better examples than that another example that i can think of that's not too deep is counseling properly so a lot of money that is spent actually goes to medication within the NHS and a lot of that is wasted because people don't know how to use their inhalers properly people don't know how to take the medication properly and then if they're not taking the medication then they're back in hospital and that also impacts on you know the costs of the NHS so yeah those are little examples but definitely make sure that it looks as though you've thought about it so the next section is funding so this is a little bit different to how you might have saved money for the NHS. This question is about what you know about funding. So do you know how the NHS is funded? What do you have to do with funding? So even if you don't know much about funding and commissioning, if that's the case, then speak to your commissioning pharmacists. That's what I did. Get information from them. So what is commissioning within pharmacy? What does it mean to fund a high cost drug? What's an individual funding request? These are all questions that you should be asking your specialist pharmacist just so you're able to give some sort of answer within the interview. If you've just recently done your six and you don't have much experience in funding, I think that some hospitals are fine with it, but they definitely want you to know some idea of it. You can't just go in blindly and be like, 
I don't know how drugs are funded. Another band seven favorite is they will ask you about a random drug that a consultant has prescribed on a Sunday night and they want to get it in. I don't know, this is a interviewer's favorite. And I guess they expect you to sort of panic and be like, okay, what is that medication? And there's definitely been interviews where I've been like, I have never heard of that drug before, which is what they expect. So think about it logically, okay? So who is the consultant that wants to prescribe it? Why do they want to prescribe it? What's it for? Which patient? Which ward is that patient on? What do I need to know about the patient. I guess if I'm going to supply it, then you need to know all about, you know, the root of the medication, the frequency, the, um, the renal function, hepatic function, whatever's, you know, relevant. But also, before you think about supplying, is this the only medication that can be given to the patient? So has the, has the patient tried anything else? Where does this sit in terms of the pathway of treatment? Can we offer anything else that maybe is on the formulary that is kept in the hospital? Does it have to be this medication? Do we have any guidelines for that medication? There's all sorts of things you can say. I mean, I've just not really given it in a structured way there, but those are kind of the questions you should be asking to be able to answer that question. Errors and clinical governance. When's the last time that you spotted an error and what did you do? A nurse makes a controlled drug error on the ward, how would you resolve that? I'm guessing that they wanna kind of make sure that you know how to deal with an error. Mainly they want to see, I guess, leadership and confidence in your abilities to deal with an error. So think about ways where you have to figure out what happened and why did it happen and how can we prevent it from happening again and the steps that you would take to make sure the patient hasn't come to any harm, have you apologized to the patient and datexing and how we can, you know, move forward with that error having been made. Right, another section of the interview will be a clinical section. So like I said at the start of this video, not every interview that I've had for a band seven has been clinical, but some of them have sent me like a patient scenario and I've just had to talk about what I would do in that situation. At this point, you essentially should know what you would do with that patient. It shouldn't be too difficult because it's what you do every day. The interviewers just wanna see that, you know, you have your baseline clinical knowledge. Another question you might get that's clinical is what is the latest intervention that you made, um, significant interventions. So think about things that you might have done on the ward to prevent harm coming to a patient. One thing I wanna say for this is definitely have a specific example. So don't just mumble on, which I've done this by the way, about random little interventions that you've made on the ward. Think about a really good intervention example where you stepped in, spoke to the team and actually intervened properly what that intervention was. Mine was, for example, on a patient with HIV who was on HIV medications and that interacted with uh, one of his infectious disease medications and how I went about solving that. So I had like a specific example and it was very clear what that intervention was. Another little band seven favorite is pharmacy in the news. So as a band six, you might be asked, what's the latest article you read? What did you think about it? Whereas as a band seven, one big thing that a lot of interviews now will ask is how has COVID changed our services? What are some of the good things that have come out of that? For example, like for our trust, we went electronic and that helped us in the way that, you know, we didn't necessarily have to be on the ward to be screening. Another thing that they might want you to talk about is how a lot of trusts are moving towards the seven day service and how you might be able to offer your help in terms of that. That. I mean, the pharmacy in the news one, I guess it can be anything, anything that you've read, but make sure that you know it inside out and that you can give your opinion on that. Oh yeah, another one is how a lot of the pharmacists in five years time might just graduate and be independent prescribers straight away. So what is your opinion on that? And they want you to have thought about everything, not just, yeah, it's great, everyone's gonna be an independent prescriber. They want you to think, but what are the implications of that? Is that necessarily a good thing? And they want you to talk it through. So I think that basically covers most of the band seven questions that you're gonna get. And those were the sections that I divided it up into. But the reason for that is because your band seven interviews tend to be a lot shorter than your band six interviews. For example, my latest interview had like eight questions only, and it was up to you to expand. and it was was up to you to talk about a range of things within the umbrella of that question, if that makes sense. Sometimes I've failed interviews because I haven't said enough. Sometimes I fail because I haven't asked questions, like what did you mean by that question? So always feel free to, you know, ask the interviewer what what did you mean? How else do you want me to go into detail? That kind of thing. So don't be afraid to do that. One thing I do want to say about becoming a band seven is do not just go for a seven because of the money. I personally think that if you don't have family and a mortgage isn't your priority and you've just qualified, like this is the time to learn. So I was a band six for two years before I went for a seven and I think I'll stay on a seven for a while as well just because 
I like rotational. I like that I get to learn under different people. I like that it changes every so often. I don't think I could say like stay stuck to one role. Don't get me wrong. If you know straight away what you want to specialize in, then go for it. But if you're not sure and you kind of like a bit of everything, then I think rotational roles are perfect for you. So yeah, don't rush into becoming a seven. I have always said to my friends, like I'd rather be told that I'm a good seven than someone to look at me and be like, oh my God, is she a seven? She barely, she barely knows anything, you know? I would hate to not match my title. So don't rush. So remember everyone, I am still helping with applications, personal statements, MFARM projects, and it's all part of my £10 review service. So if you need help grammatically with your, you know, supporting information when applying for a band seven post or a band six post, then come my way. You'll see some instructions in the description box below. Beyond grammatically reviewing your written application and stuff, I'm not offering any interview help. This video is the most interview help that you'll get from me. And that's because I don't have a hundred percent success rate in my interviews. So I don't want to be giving people advice when then I've not been successful in all of my interviews and I probably should improve my interview practice as well. So I don't help with interviews, but I definitely help in you getting an interview. So if you would like some help in terms of your application, then follow the instructions below. Other than that, I hope that this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.